commercial and infrastructure developments in and around townships has led to an increase in value in township residential properties. I visited Philippine Cape Town where real estate professional Fernando Antonio explained exactly why this has attracted many first-time home buyers as well as property investors to the townships. Fernando, welcome to All About Property. Thanks for being here. Now, um, township properties have shown a lot of activity in recent years. Tell me about this. Okay, so basically um, there's a lot of couple of um, things that are fueling the township property market. First of all, the significant developments of the malls and infrastructures in the townships are actually one of these factors that actually fueling the activities in the townships. So people are now coming from other regions to come and buy properties in the townships mm -hmm. because of all these significant developments taking place in the townships. Talk to me a bit more about these developments. Okay, so these developments include the building of malls. If you look at around the across the road here, there's a new development taking place, a commercial one. Mm -hmm. So at some point, most people will be will will actually want to increase their properties, even in terms of rentals, where they're mm -hmm. selling their property, because now there's an there's an impact within the area. And who is currently buying? township properties? Okay, basically I think there are three target markets for the township. Uh, first and foremost is first time home buyers. Mm -hmm. Basically most of them they are recent graduates, mm -hmm. get a job, they find a property, you know, they, they get married and then they find a property. Mm -hmm. And secondly it's property investors. Mm -hmm. These are the people who buy properties and just to list them out for monthly income. Yes. And lastly it's also property developers. These people buy a land, you know, develop uh, properties mm -hmm. and sell all those units. And what should investors be looking out for? Uh, because surely not every township is ideal for property investment. Okay, um, um, a lot of people um, have it, uh, think that the township is uh, crime infested, whereas not all the townships are crime infested. Mm -hmm. I think the first thing you need to look at is whether this area is not crime infested, whether the infrastructures for people to be able to access certain economic um, activities. Mm -hmm. I think that's the one thing you need to look out for, which will have an impact in the rental income or rather the sale of the property. Okay. Yeah, that's the big one. Let's talk about that first time home buyer. Why is a township property a good step in the door for that, for that first time home buyer? I think the township is mainly known for low cost properties. Mm. So for a first time home buyer, especially within the township, most people, most sellers actually prefer to sell cash mm -hmm. and not bond because of the whole process. So with low cost properties, you are able to access a loan of 150,000 or 170,000 cash and you buy the property. First come, first serve. And I think the other opportunity is that, you know, most of these RTP properties are mainly two bedrooms or one bedroom. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge extent of land for one to be able to build their dream homes. Now there's also a, a government housing subsidy that is there to assist these first time home buyers. Tell us about this subsidy. With that program you need to qualify for, for a home loan mm -hmm. with the financial institutions, with an accredited one of course. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, let's say you're purchasing a property of 300,000, yes. but then um, the bank doesn't give you the full amount of 300,000, they then decide to give you 250,000. Mm -hmm. That's where FLISP comes in. FLISP will be able to pay the shortfall of the asking price of the property. So, uh, Fernando, tell me, who qualifies for this FLISP subsidy? Okay. So basically we look at the household income. So mm -hmm. if, if the household income is between three and a half to 22,000, you qualify for FLISP. Now, you're also involved in, in an initiative where people are being educated on township uh, properties. Tell me more about this initiative. Okay, we take you through a journey. So if you, do, if you do not qualify for a property at this time in point, for example, you attend our educational um, workshops, we educate you and put you in different programs to assist you to make you qualify for a property at some point. Now, you are the founder of a township property portal called zakazi.co.za. Yes. Why, would, why did you uh, see a need for such a property portal? Okay, mm -hmm. so um, basically most of the people in the township normally go to train stations to put up posters saying that I'm looking for a property or I'm selling a property. So now the idea came about 
in order to solve this solution, you know, this phenomenon that's taking place, let's rather create a township property platform, take all these available properties in the township, mm -hmm. put them under one umbrella and, you know, I'll give access to people to be able to access these properties with an education, of course. Any last thoughts that you want to leave the view with, uh, with regards to township properties? It's important to ensure that there are legal documents pertaining to this property, okay. whether indeed it's in the name of whoever sells the property. Mm -hmm. In most cases, people will sell you the property, but then it's not on their, their name. Yeah. Especially for first-time home buyers, it's very important to ensure that the property is indeed owned by this person who's selling the property. Go to an attorney for an assistance to do the deed search on the property to verify the person who's selling the property because um, most people in the township prefer cash and not bond. Fantastic, lovely chatting to you, thank you very much. Thanks, Kunini.